This is Dr. Christopher Cernike hosting episode 15 of season 6 of the Current Topics in Science podcast. This podcast will address breaking scientific news in light of the origins debate and host interviews with scientists. Today we'll be covering extremophile microbes as evidence for the scientific theory of intelligent design. This podcast is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Audible, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Video recordings of the podcast will be uploaded to YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Do you remember the Pixar hit animated movie Cars? Well, as the story goes, a rookie racer named Lightning McQueen finds himself on Route 66. McQueen was lost and soon found himself in very extreme legal situations. Interestingly enough, researchers who published in the Journal of Proteome Research find themselves in similar circumstance to McQueen because the number 66 has just impacted their life in a very, shall we say, extreme way. What I mean is this, that a team of researchers has just identified 66 microorganisms using proteotyping and 16S ribosomal RNA or rRNA gene amplicon sequencing. Not just any micro- Extremophiles. Their paper called Exploring Andine High Altitude Lake Extremophiles Through Advanced Proteotyping explains how these researchers contrasted two identification methods. Let's take a look at these two methods. Proteotyping is sort of like taking a fingerprint of a microorganism. However, instead of using DNA like in a forensic investigation, proteotyping looks at the proteins which are the building blocks of living things to figure out what type of microorganism it is. It helps scientists quickly identify different kinds of microorganisms, which is useful for studying biodiversity and understanding how they survive in extreme environments. 16S ribosomal RNA gene amplicon sequencing is like taking a snapshot of a specific part of a microorganism's DNA. This part, called the 16S rRNA gene, acts like a barcode that helps scientists identify different types of microorganisms. By sequencing this gene, scientists can figure out what kinds of microorganisms are present in a sample and learn more about their diversity and abundance. It's like looking at a piece of a puzzle to see what kinds of pieces are there and how they fit together in the bigger picture of microbial communities. Physics.com summarized the result of the friendly competition between these two methods as follows. With these methods, the researchers identified 63 of the 66 microorganisms that were cultivated from the high altitude lake samples. For the three microorganisms that gene sequencing failed to identify because their genetic information wasn't in the available databases, proteotyping identified two potentially new types of extremophile bacteria. These results suggest proteotyping could be a more complete solution for identifying extremophile microorganisms from small biological samples. So it seems like the winner is proteotyping. I hope that we'll continue to learn about extremophiles as they are some of the coolest organisms on the planet. In fact, some of them are quite literally out of this world. When I had the honor of taking a certification course from Kyoto University, I chose their certification on the extremes of life. There I was introduced to an exciting world of extremophiles, including my favorite, Thermococcus cotocarensis. It's a thermophilic archaea, and I love it because it can survive temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But there are so many other kinds of extremophiles, like chirophiles, that survive in cold that would make a yeti race to the beach in the sunshine state, piezophiles that survive under pressures that could crack a submarine, and even endoliths that live inside rocks. Extremophiles are amazing because without them, we would not have been able to use DNA as evidence in a court of law. 
DNA sequencing only became a reality when scientists discovered the extremisms in superheat-loving bacteria or thermophiles. Scientists harnessed extremisms by incorporating them into the reaction mixtures used in DNA sequencing processes. The extremisms then interact with the DNA molecules, facilitating processes such as DNA amplification or replication. These extremisms are specifically chosen for their ability to function in extreme conditions, ensuring that DNA sequencing can proceed effectively even in harsh environments. That being said, how do extremophiles survive in such harsh environments? These organisms have several tricks up their sleeve. Some of them live by keeping the external environment out. So while their external skin is acid tolerant, they have functional machinery that can pump out zinc, copper, and cobalt before internal levels become too toxic. Some extremophiles have rapid repair of DNA and backup copies of their full DNA sequence, and they even have special mechanisms that limit mutations by removing damaged DNA from the extremophile before it can be reincorporated. And for any of you listening that have a sweet tooth, some extremophiles create special sugar that acts like water molecules, thus maintaining membrane fluidity and protecting their cell components. This is all just incredible. And I'd like to finish this episode with a quote from the late and the great Dr. David Catchpool. He wrote, As this latest surge of exploration and laboratory research reveals yet more extremophile microbes and other organisms able to withstand far harsher conditions than anywhere on Earth, the challenge to evolutionary theory becomes even more intractable. This is because natural selection can only select characteristics necessary for immediate survival. Consequently, evolution cannot be expected to over-equip creatures for a host of environments they've never faced. For Christians though, the over-design of these creatures speaks of a designer and is not surprising that God also built into the living things of his creatures the capacity to move out and fill the whole world, just as he commanded. Indeed, God has designed life all across the spectrum, even at the extremes. And as the Bible says in Isaiah 66, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. And finally, to our listeners, thank you very much for taking the time to learn with us on current topics in science, where scientific discoveries are examined in light of the origins issue. You can find the articles referenced in this podcast episode, more evidence for intelligent design, and a link to the Christ Jesus Ministries merch store in the description. Please share and subscribe to the Current Topics in Science podcast. It's available on iTunes, Audible, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for listening, and remember, the truth saves.